So I don't know if you guys saw this tweet from Jake Lucky. It went viral on Twitter earlier today. The legend Tifu is retiring from gaming and streaming. He's not sure if or when he will return. I need to live my life is a quote from the video. So Tifu uploaded this roughly 40 minute long video to his YouTube channel. We're not going to rewatch it here, um, but it is available on his YouTube if you guys want to go watch it. Um, we'll watch this minute 25 second clip just so you guys can get an idea of what this is all about. I just feel like I need to go like fucking fucked. I just need to go live my life. You know? <sighs> Fuck, dude. Shout out to all my fucking fans and the people that supported me along the way. Uh, who knows if I'll be back, man? Uh, I mean, maybe, who knows? I just need to, like, I just need time to, like, get away. Just go, like, live my life, because I feel like. I feel like early in my, like, gaming career, I use, like, gaming to, like, I use gaming to kind of like escape like from reality and I feel like now like I use like reality to escape from like fucking work you know I just feel fucking like kind of trapped sometimes you know Ugh. I just feel, I just feel like fucking a lot dude it's been fucking hard Streaming like fucking six, eight hours a day. I don't have time to like do shit. So I just need to take like, time off, you know? Yeah. I'm fucking 25. So pretty emotional video. Um, and this was met with a lot of what you'd expect. It's a lot of people showing support for Tifu, telling him how much he meant to them, telling them telling him how much he meant to the whole gaming industry, the whole live streaming space. I mean, Tifu's been creating content forever. Most people only know him really since he ever had that like famous 1v1 against Ninja in Fortnite. And that was really a huge propulsion for his career. There were some streamers uh, throughout the years that I think rated him too. That kind of helped him rise to the level that he's at now. Tifu's been, been around for a really long time. He's been streaming for a very, very long time. Over a decade, I'm pretty sure he's been live streaming and creating content. And while there were a lot of people that were like showing love and support to him, I did end up seeing a TikTok of Ninja reacting to the news about Tifu retiring and talking about how like most people don't get how mentally taxing it is to live stream every single day for the hours that these top streamers do six to eight hours a day every single day. And the comments on that TikTok weren't really in support of Ninja or Tifu once that conversation starts, right? It all has come down to like, man, these millionaires are out of touch. Dude, I would stream 20 hours a day if it meant that I got to uh, be paid and do it full time. It, it seems like there's not a lot of people who empathize with it. And I get it. I really do get it, right? Like if you ask anybody, especially kids nowadays, like what your dream job is, a lot of people will say it's like content creation, gaming, live streaming, like influencer, right? Is the answer. I think it's the most popular thing that uh, kids want to be nowadays, right? That's like their job, their dream job that they want when they grow up and even adults too, but a lot of kids. And so people talk about like, oh dude, six to eight hours a day. That's just a regular nine to five. I would love to be able to spend time doing that playing video games. And I'll start everything by saying that it, it, it is a dream job to be able to create content and make your own hours and you kind of be your own boss. It is really great. But I feel like at the same time, there's a lot of people that don't necessarily understand the kind of mental toll it can take on specific kinds of content creators. And I feel like what people don't understand is how, tr like when Tifu talks about feeling trapped, he's talking about the fact that like he's forced to create one specific kind of content. Uh, and if he doesn't, then his viewership is going to go away and his income is going to wildly fluctuate, be cut by like probably 50% in some cases if he's not doing what the audience expects, which is in his case, battle royale content or Fortnite. And he's been successful when he does like Minecraft stuff, right? Or when he'll, you know, um, when he switches over to another game, like, I, I, you know, recently he did Minecraft speed runs. He came back with Fortnite zero build for a little bit, but I feel like, um, I don't know. Th there's a certain level of energy that you have to bring to every single live stream, right? Like when people talk about all you got to do is just go live and you sit in a chair and play video games. When you're at these guys level, you've got to provide some sort of level of entertainment too. So you're expected to be in front of the camera and bring a certain amount of energy to the live stream. And if you don't do that, people are going to call you out for it. So you, you kind of have to be uppity every single time you go live, right? Even on the days that you don't want to. And again, I know that sounds like not really a big thing, but you're doing that every single day, six to eight hours a day. The mental, it's not really as much of a physical toll, obviously, as much as it's a mental toll that it can take on you and kind of being in the spotlight and what 
that feels like to go live in his case in front of tens of thousands of people every single day. It's uh, yeah, it's just one of those jobs that overarching, I feel like it's, it's just kind of hard to describe the mental toll that it can take on a content creator. And you really don't necessarily get that unless you've unless you've tried it. I don't know. And there are a lot of content creators out there that can like uh, that maybe don't necessarily feel that burnout if they're in a fortunate enough position where they aren't tied to one specific thing. Right. Because I feel like most people don't know these numbers. Right. But like when you're a content creator and especially a streamer, you're expected to be not only on every single day in terms of the energy that you bring to the live stream, but you also have to be extremely consistent to the point where like even if you miss three, four, God forbid, five days in a row of streaming, you're going to lose if you're a live streamer on Twitch, a massive amount of subscribers. I watched Moist Critical's video earlier where he was talking about he took three or four days off from live streaming and lost 8,000 subscribers when he came back. That's a huge chunk of revenue. And obviously that's not detrimental to his career or detrimental to his income. He'll still be able to pay the bills and stuff. But I feel like that's one of those examples where like a regular nine to five job, if you took three or four days off, right? Like you were, if you were given an extended break, you'd come back and you'd still be, you'd still be expecting that same paycheck to come in for the work that you're doing. And I feel like that's another aspect that people don't really get is the, especially when you're first starting out, you know, you're not like a multi multi millionaire necessarily. Um, if you're kind of in a situation where you're fortunate enough to do streaming, but you're kind of living on the closer end of like paycheck to paycheck, um, taking any time off can be a huge detriment to your career. Um, not only in terms of your income, but then also your relevancy because people forget about you really quick. Um, um, especially in the live streaming space, viewers expect you to be there all the time. And if you're not, they'll just fill that void with somebody else who is there and then forget about you when you come back. It's not like once you start live streaming again, uh, after those three or four days, Moist Critical is going to get those 8,000 subscribers back, right? Like it'll take him a long time to build that back up again. And he was only able to get to that point because of the consistency that he had. Yeah, it's it's uh, easy to sit and do nothing of value to the world, like an oil rig worker. Well, obviously these people aren't providing no value, right? They're literally, the, the value has to be somewhere for them to be making millions, right? That's that's somebody else's money that's going into their pocket because somebody thinks it's worth it. Um, so yeah, I know those, there's all those like toxic dumbass conversations too about like, oh, if you aren't like working with your hands or working in construction, <laughs> you know, then it's not a real job, which is just, you know, obviously that's bullshit, but yeah, I don't know. It's an interesting conversation. And Tifu's had a massive impact on the, on the whole live streaming gaming space, of course, too. He's huge. It's not even that bad. This is something we should celebrate. Uh, how to be relieved of one of his burdens. Yeah. Right, exactly. Right. And and he's 25 too. And so he's in a lucky enough position where he'll get to go off and, and do whatever he wants to do next and maybe come back to streaming one day or, or maybe not. Who knows what he's going to pursue? Um, but it is it is one of those things that it's like it is it because it, I, I get how it all sounds, right? Oh, you get paid to play video games. Oh, you know, if you're not in that position, it's like, gosh, I would love to be able to sit down and play my favorite game for six to eight hours a day. And you would you would enjoy it for the first I don't know, probably like month or two. But at the end of the day, like once it becomes your job, once you do that thing, right? Like it's only special because you don't get to do it all the time. Once it, once that reality sinks in and that is your job, your job is just to play the same game in Tifu's case, play a battle royale every single day. It's it, it, that, that will end up not being fun anymore, but you've got to bring that energy every single day and you've got to do it for six to eight hours a day. You can't just like show up and go through the motions. You've got to actually be really good at the game that you're playing and be really entertaining beyond, right? Or else like people are going to, are going to go away. So there's, there's a certain like mental drain to it that I feel like some people don't get when these conversations are had and I get it too I really do get it I get how it all sounds and I get how it all looks but does it make you sad that he's retired um no I'm happy for him um I used to have his streams open like all the time people hate worse jobs and still do it streaming is an easy job yeah of course but like I don't know. You can always play that game though. Like all the people that are leaving the comment, like so that TikTok that I watched earlier of Ninja reacted to Tifu retiring and talking about how like oh, people just don't get how like draining it could be to stream six to eight hours a day. And then you get all these comments like what Step Bro's saying when people are like, oh, these millionaires are so out of touch. I'd love to be able to play video games for a living. Da, 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 da. Those people who are leaving those comments being like, oh, I'd love to be able to do what you do, dude. Um, you can kind of make the same argument in their case, right? It's like, hey, there's definitely somebody who's in a worse position than you're in, right? You might hate your job. Let's say you work, I don't know, the meme job is always McDonald's, right? Let's say you work in the fast food industry and you hate your job. You're just going through those motions every single day, right? And it, you dread it. And it's just a miserable experience every day you go into work. Using that same logic, you shouldn't be complaining about your job and you should feel fortunate because there's somebody else in the world, uh, you know, who has to like beat rocks in the sun every single day or whatever. You know what I mean? Like there's always going to be somebody who has it worse than you. So that's just a shitty argument too, in the sense that it's like, you should be thankful. If you work at McDonald's and you live in the US, you're in a first world country. You're doing better than the majority of people who are 
alive, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's it's demanding in its own way, you know? It is. It just is. And like, I don't know, the, the answer that I've always given people is like when people say it's like, oh, such a fucking easy job, like blah, blah, blah. Like the, 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 the sort of like combative but real answer that I'll give to people is like, okay, cool. You think it's an easy job? Then go do it. Like seriously, go do it. And I mean that in a way of like, I'm not trying to be condescending, but it's just like, if you can, if you have the potential to sit down in front of a camera and play a game, tell a story, um, grow an audience and get people to give a shit about you, um, it can be very rewarding, but it's hard to do. And the barrier to entry is really low though. You know, all you need is like a camera, an internet connection and a story you want to share. That's really the only criteria that you need in order to become an influencer nowadays. You just got to have something you want to share with people, people that are going to resonate with you. Whenever you get tired and want to get off the game, you can, but with big streamers, you can't just randomly get off too. Right. Yeah, exactly. What's up, Jazz? How you doing? Streamer, streamer is easy. People just give them money for real, Kelton. God, it's so easy. Streamers are such fucking crybabies, dude, and they should stop being such bitches. Kelton, thank you for the $50 donation, dude. Oh man, imagine giving money to a millionaire. Oh my God, I'm not a millionaire. Please, I wish. Jesus Christ. Hey, if I was a millionaire, I would never complain. Gosh, I can't imagine why Tifu was ever complaining. Gosh, what a crybaby loser, dude. Streaming is easy as long as you have the good money savings that will put you towards setup after that. You just need good ideas. That's it. Yeah, but it's like, dude, that's literally like saying Mr. Beast job is easy because like all you got to do is have good ideas. Dude, the barrier to entry is so low. If you have an internet connection, a camera and a story or something that you want to share, you can be an influencer. That's the barrier to entry. Pretty much everybody in the in a first world country can do that. So if it's really that simple, as you say, you just got to have ideas or something you want to say, then just go do it. Literally, you can open up your phone, record yourself saying something and upload it to TikTok. You know what I mean? I work in the coal mines 25 hours a day for that money just to... Just to give it to a billionaire? Dude, for real, so messed up. Facts though. <laughs> like your job is in your pocket. Yeah, the potential is right there. It's free to make a YouTube account. It's free to make a TikTok account. And then you can upload an unlimited amount of content. Why don't Why don't you just go do it? If it's if it's that simple, right? Like, and I, I only prove that point again, not to be condescending, but just to get people to think about how like, just to get people to not only see the opportunity, that the potential is there, but then also to think like, obviously, just, just for you to know, obviously there's more to it than that, than just like having, you just gotta have like ideas for content, right? There's obviously more to it than that. <laughs> Um, but I also, I really sympathize with the fact that it's suck. It's really difficult to relate to. I really do. Cause if you're grinding away at your traditional nine to five and you're working in the fast food industry, I get, I get how it all looks. Why is this guy crying in front of the camera? He has millions of dollars in his bank account. He can literally go do whatever he wants the rest of his life. He's built generational wealth. Why is he crying? What's he upset about? He feels trapped. Cry me a river, right? I get how all of it looks. But again, it's just one of those things that like you just don't get until you're in in a position like that. It's the same conversation about how like when people talk about celebrities, right? Like how can celebrities ever be sad because they have millions of dollars, right? Like using that logic, you should never be depressed if you have a million dollars. And obviously we know that's not true. It's not like these people are going in front of a camera, just like faking it. Justin Bieber didn't write that song about how he's so lowly or whatever the, whatever the fuck that song was, right? He didn't write that song just to fucking grandstand and talk about, you know what I mean? Like I guarantee there's a certain level of like, I think my theory about human nature, right? is like money provides pleasure, like short-term pleasure, but happiness is different than pleasure, like true happiness. Like happiness is more of like a spiritual state where you feel like a sense of fulfillment and money is like a key to a short-term pleasure thing. No, no, you're right though. It is a very unstable thing to do, which is why I don't do it. <laughs> real estate's better. Hey dude, I wish I knew how to get into real estate. I don't know anything about that. The sad thing is as soon as you don't answer or respond to a fan, they, uh, they in... They on sub like, bro. Yeah, that's true too. There's those people out there that are like that fickle, right? So I get it. Like, I, there's pros and cons to it, just like any job. You know what I'm saying? Henry, how do you stay so calm when stating something or arguing? Um, because I am extremely confident that all of my positions are 100% true and correct, and nobody has ever said anything that's led me to believe that any of my positions are wrong. Because I am an extremely highly intelligent human being, and nobody can even come close to disproving any of them. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I don't know because there's no point, especially in a con in a conversation like this. There's no point. Like, like that's kind of one of those things too. Is like when it comes to being on YouTube, you get really good at uh, kind of being desensitized to like some stuff. Like there's certain things that just kind of like roll off your back um, at a certain point, just because they don't like. I've noticed that like one of the things I I had a lot of trouble growing up. I had a lot of like self-confidence issues. Like I did not have a lot of confidence in myself and YouTube and being a content creator helped me improve on that in two ways. One, it gave me the opportunity to prove that I could do something, right? So like over the years of grinding, over the years of the time that I've been like making content since like 2013, um, 
was when I made like my first one or two YouTube channels. I was able to like prove to myself, like, look, I put in this work. This is what I accomplished. And I'm the one who did that, right? There's nobody else who, who did this. I put in the work. I've been doing this for almost 10 years. I, I did it, right? This was all me. And so like I proved that to myself and that gave me a lot of confidence and I felt confidence in that. And then at a certain point too, like this isn't probably the healthiest way to do it, but like, especially as a live streamer, you're getting instant feedback to everything you're doing, right? Like anything that I say out loud, I'm immediately getting feedback from a live audience, right? It's not like I produce a video and then I read the comments afterwards and like there's time to digest and think about it. Like when it comes to live streaming, like I'm constantly getting feedback on everything that I'm doing. And I think at a certain point, you kind of learn to like filter in and out certain stuff. You kind of learn like what to absorb and what to not absorb. Comments still affect me, but they affect me way less than they used to. And I think a lot of that comes with like having confidence in not only like what I've been able to accomplish, but the things that I know can't be taken away from me, right? Like I have confidence in myself in terms of my abilities, like the things that I've been able to accomplish and the characteristics that I have as a person, the things that I'm proud of, like I'm the, the, the parts of myself that uh, I have a lot of pride about, right? Those things can't be taken away if somebody comes into my chat and says, uh, hey man, you fell off. Nobody fucking watches you anymore, right? Like those com those comments still suck. Nobody likes to read those comments, but those affect me way less now than they did probably like a year or two ago, you know? Because I know that that's not all of who I am. It used to be, but it's not all of who I am now. Um, you have to be calm so you don't look like a dumbass. That's why Prona succeeds in giving his perspective. He is in fact smart, which I indeed think he is for being so wise and calm. Thank you. That's really nice of you to say. Yeah, you also kind of lose people too when you start to like, if you start to like yell and rage sometimes, people kind of, um, I mean, you can like reach more people, right? But you, you start to like, in the sense that like outrage gets people's attention. But I feel like if you stay like kind of calm and collected and like stoic to a certain extent, you kind of prove that like you're confident in what you're saying, you know? Um. So yeah, anyways, that's that's all my thoughts on the whole Tifu situation. I know that was kind of all over the place. <laughs> um. But yeah, I feel like people just need to have some more. Uh, I think the big thing is like recognize that regardless of whatever position you're in in life, you're always going to return to like a baseline level of like happiness, right? Like I'd say on average, somebody who's, you know, know, poor or making like, uh, yeah, somebody who would be considered to be like below the poverty line in terms of income and somebody who's like a millionaire. I think both of those people over the course of a year, probably have the same amount of like sad days and happy days. They're sad and happy for different reasons. But to say that the millionaire is never sad or shouldn't ever be sad just because they have more money, that's just not human nature. That's just not how people work. You know, you're going to have the same amount of happy or sad days. You're probably on average, you're going to cry the same amount. You're going to laugh the same amount. You're going to, you know what I mean? Like you're going to have those same experiences. Again, they're going to be, they're going to be about different things, but like to expect that like the millionaire is never going to be sad just because they have money is like ridiculous. You know what I mean? And we, we, of course that's not true. I bet being really popular on YouTube, YouTube at the, at the time was sick though. At least you got to experience that. Yeah. And like, I mean, hopefully it comes back at some point, right? Like if I continue to do what I'm doing. But yeah, it's funny. It's like, it's one of those things like you never, when I was in it, like, and it, like this, and I know that to be true. I know that to be true because I'm the same level of happiness now that I was when I was pulling thousands of viewers every single stream, like up between like five and 10,000 viewers every single stream. I'm the same. I have the same average amount of happy days, sad days, you know, miserable days, really great days that I did when I was in that position. Again, they're for different things, but that's just, that's just true. It's all going to like average out. And I think the real detriment and part of what makes a job as a content creator difficult sometimes is not only do you get to that position of being where Tifu's at, right? But then when you start to feel sad, you're told by everybody else that you shouldn't be, right? Like he he's been he's been feeling trapped and probably in this position for a while where he's like, fuck, I gotta stream Fortnite again. I don't want to do this. If I don't do this, my income's gonna take a huge hit, right? And again, I know we're talking about a money thing, but it didn't feel fulfilling for him. And he probably had contract requirements to fulfill in terms of like hours for Twitch, right? Like that must have sucked uh to do for that that period of time. Um, yeah. Anyways, I, I keep losing my train of thought right now. You know what I mean? I can't, I like I can't focus for some reason. I keep like I keep starting on a little spiel and then I like I can't mentally fucking finish it for some reason. 